Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about our organization, Canyon Creek Services, and what exactly we do in the community. Our goal at Canyon Creek Services, um, we have a vision statement of communities free of domestic violence and sexual assault. We realize this is a big goal, but it's the only acceptable goal because we don't accept that domestic violence and sexual assault are normal parts of life that can't be changed. We know through research that uh, it can be prevented and we don't have to accept it in our community and we won't accept it in our community. Uh, we are a nonprofit agency serving Iron Beaver and Garfield counties here in Utah. And something to know is um, right now we are the only uh, organization of our type, so an organization that advocates for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault in those three counties. We offer free and confidential services for all survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, regardless of who they are or um, what they look like or what they believe, we serve them. And we also provide community education, not just about the awareness of domestic violence and sexual assault, but also about how we can prevent violence from ever happening in our community. We teach things like healthy relationships and bystander intervention. So those, those tools that our community needs to be free of domestic violence and sexual assault, which is the larger social change we're working towards. We, we want we know how important it is to serve survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, but one day we want there to be no survivors because there is no domestic violence and sexual assault. So what exactly do we do? We do both intervention and prevention. We wanna be as well known for our intervention, which is serving survivors, as we are for our prevention. So preventing violence from ever happening in the first place. Some of our survivor services um, under that department, we offer victim advocacy, court and medical accompaniment, crisis intervention, safety planning, um, which is helping the survivor know um, like who they can go to if um, a, a harmful situation arises, making sure they have a backpack with all their important documents. And our crisis intervention is uh, through our 24-hour hotline that we have and we'll talk about that in a minute but we also offer housing services beyond our shelter so you know long-term stable housing for survivors individual service plans information and referral so if we can't help a survivor we will find someone who can uh, child and youth services our emergency shelter which we're best known for our services awareness is actually um, under our awareness and prevention department um, putting up hotline posters around um, towns and letting people know who we are and what we do. Because if survivors don't know who we are or what we do, then they're not gonna be ever able to access our services, right? And then community education and prevention, just that idea that we need to work with our community to stop violence from ever happening in the first place. So like I said, our survivor services department is our intervention, so serving survivors. And then we also have our volunteer program. We are heavily reliant on good volunteers because um, they help us, you know, as a nonprofit, fill in, you know, the gaps where we need more people, such as, you know, at shelter, in our administrative offices, at survivor services, wherever. We love our volunteers. Um, we also have our development department, which is, which is essentially our fundraising department. They help. Um, us get donations, financial and then in-kind donations from the community, which we also really rely on. And then our awareness and prevention department, again, they provide awareness on what we do at Canyon Creek, but also um, help educate the community and work with the community on how to prevent that violence from ever happening. And then our business and operations department is just our department that helps run the day-to-day -day operations that any business has, right? So things like payroll and HR paperwork, that's our business and operations department. This is the scope of our work. So this is for um, last fiscal year, July 2019 to July 2020. We serve 770 clients and this number um, continues to go, grow each year. And we love serving survivors, but we know there are so many out there who haven't reached out for help for whatever reason. 
And um, if you'll notice, we are best known for our shelter, but only 165 of the clients that we served actually used our shelter. So this just kind of goes to show that um, our survivors have a diverse, um, they're diverse in their experiences and they're diverse in their needs. So if you know a survivor, if you are a survivor and need help, Canyon Creek can help you. It doesn't matter what that is. And we'll talk about what, how we help in a minute. So our survivor services, like I said, we serve, our, serve all survivors, including those who are still in a relationship or contact with their abuser. We know that that's the survivor's choice, whether or not they should leave, because sometimes they, it's not safe to leave, and sometimes they love their abuser, and that's their choice to stay in that relationship. We have a couple divisions within our survivor services department. We have domestic violence advocates, we have sexual assault advocates who serve survivors of sexual assault. We have housing advocates and they help our um, survivors find long-term term stable housing um, and help them find the resources to have a place that's safe. We have our case management division and case management, they do a lot of the paperwork so that our advocates can spend more time with the clients. We have our shelter staff who help staff our shelter and help keep it clean and help keep the clients there happy and safe. We also have child and youth advocates, so we do serve anyone. When we say anyone, you know, it doesn't matter the age because unfortunately, children and teens do experience domestic violence and sexual assault and dating violence, so we're here to serve them. And then we do have bilingual services and uh, we offer services in English and Spanish. So what exactly does an advocate do? I keep saying the word advocate. An advocate is just essentially someone who's help, who helps and supports the survivors with their needs and goals. So um, they're, they're the personal contact with the survivor. Um, and this can look like a lot of things, but here are some examples. Um, advocates provide crisis intervention on the 24-hour hotline. So um, we have our 24-hour crisis hotline that clients can text or call and that's the best way for a survivor to reach out for help and it doesn't matter what help they need they can call us on that hotline um, they help clients apply for jobs or just create resumes um, they go to court with clients for emotional support they safety plan or make ex escape plans with clients they process with survivors so a survivor might not need our other services but they might just need someone to talk to to go through and just process what they've experienced and advocates can do that. They also ensure that victims are aware of their rights, so they know their legal rights. Um, they accompany survivors to hospital for medical exams or to law enforcement interviews, just to be, again, that emotional support. They help a client search for available rental, so help them find housing. They screen clients for shelter to see if um, they need to stay in our shelter. Um, they provide emergency financial assistance. They help clients make relapse prevention plans. So a lot of survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault cope with that trauma using substances uh, like drugs and alcohol. And if they want to get sober, advocates are here to help them come up with a relapse prevention plan on what to do um, if they're struggling. Um, they refer clients to relevant community services. Again, um, we can help connect you to the people that can help you. Um, they host support groups and they assist victims in filing requests for protective orders and stalking injunctions, those legal documents that help um, survivors stay safe from their abusers and so much more. Um, if you ever wonder if you need Help, like if 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 a if an advocate can help you in your situation, please call our hotline because chances are that they can. This is something that's unique um, to kind of people, uh, organizations that do the kind, same kind of work that we do. We have really really strict confidentiality laws. These were established under the Violence Against Women Act in 1994. Um, and it's a federal act that includes strong restrictions on service, pro on service providers' ability to share client information. So we do that for a number of reasons, but really we have to keep clients safe, right? We can't just tell anyone like, oh yeah, this person's in our services because we're gonna be telling, what if it gets back to the abuser or it, that person is the abuser, right? So for safety reasons, we don't share any client information, very limited client information, 
um, unless we get permission from the client. This confidentiality laws are actually stricter than HIPAA. So um, think about how strict your doctor is with things they can tell people about you. Our laws are even stricter. And because it's a federal act, it overrides any state laws or provisions. So um, this can sometimes be frustrating for people because they'll call us knowing that we're serving someone specific and they'll ask to speak with that person and we have to say we cannot confirm nor deny that we're working with that person. But I can ensure you if we are working with the person, we will, you know, always give them a message and let them know who's trying to contact them um, in case they want to go out and, you know, they get to make that choice if they want to be in contact with that person. But we won't ever, you know, throw your message away if we are serving a survivor. We'll just, we can't confirm or deny if we are. Um, our referral process, so the best way to reach us if you're a survivor, if you know a survivor who needs help is our 24 hour hotline. Um, it's that number right there. Um, again, you can call or text it. And then we also have a physical location or survivor services office. It's on 535 South Main Street. Um, here, here in Cedar City, which is where um, our offices are. And um, like I said, the hotline is the best way to get a hold of us. Um, if you'd like, you can follow us on social media to learn more about what we're doing at Canyon Creek and how to help prevent domestic violence and sexual assault in the community. And then if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, this is some inform um, an email you can use to reach out if you have any further questions or would like to get involved. And again, if you're a survivor in need of services, please, please, please call our 24-hour hotline.